three. Oh, hi. Just a moment. Ah. I don't know why I was wearing a mask. I'm the only one in the room. Also, it's midnight. I'm not sure why I'm wearing sunglasses. Hey, they're cool. Also, wearing this and this and this. If you want to get your own badass TTB merchandise, check the link in the description below. Snag some of that shit. On with the video. All right, so I've accumulated half a dozen things that I wanted to show in a video, but didn't really have a format or an idea for the video itself. So I just kind of threw them all here and uh, figured I'd just go through them and talk about them. And they're all very interesting, so no need for a skit or anything like that. By the way, I hope you've enjoyed my recent skit videos. More to come soon. This is not one of those comedy gold for some of these guys. All right, first thing here, let's get this big, massive thing out of the way. Um, I've got a problem. I bought this. Why, you may ask? I don't know, thought it was cool. Thought I would hang it up on the wall. It's a vintage display of roller skate pencil sharpeners. A lot of them. So many, in fact, that I even took an entire row off the bottom and gave them away as freebies in a sale I had on Instagram. Still got a ton of them left. It was cheap. Grabbed it. Hung it on the wall. Don't think I can make a video about these. Maybe I could review a pencil sharpener? Would that be exciting? I don't think so. Anyway. I have a problem. Up next is a very interesting item that I got from my buddy Tony of Retro World Korea. And uh, quite rare item. And I wanted to do a review of this, but I don't have the original figure to compare it to. And I really don't want to open this up just because it's so rare. Check out the close up. Yeah, so this is a vintage 1980s bootleg micro change figure from the Microman series, which is related to Transformers, but in a Dragon Ball packaging. My wife reads Korean and she said it says Dragon Ball written out in Korean and it says Sun Kong, which is the uh, Korean name for Goku. And uh, yeah, it's the figure it comes with all the accessories and stuff. And then on the back, they've actually like bothered to make a back to this toy, which is very interesting. They've got the story here, which I can't read. So uh, here, here's a close up of the back in case you can translate it for me in the, in the comments below. But yeah, you got the full, full thing with uh, Dragon Ball art here. You got Goku and then down the center and on the side, you've got uh, the little micro change robot dude. His name in Mike the Micro Change line is Metal Man. Now he turns into a ball, so I assume that since he's a ball, they were like, oh, we could sell this as Dragon Ball because I guess Micro Change and Transformers weren't popular in Korea in the 80s? Okay, this next thing is really random. Uh, it's not a toy. And I really wanted to do a video on this. So bad that I bought a few different things that I probably shouldn't have. And uh, yeah, it's this. <laughs> Believe it or not, I looked forever for this, uh, a decent copy. So this is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. And if you have not seen this movie, do yourself a favor and watch this movie. It is, no pun intended, bat shit insane, hilariously, over the top, dark comedy. A 
if you're trying to buy it on Blu-ray, it's out of print in the U.S., so it's very expensive. But I wanted to have, I have got the DVD. I wanted to have like a Japanese uh, VHS copy of it. The VHS in itself is unremarkable. I mean, other than, you know, it's cool. Um, I do have a few Japanese VHS that I collect, but I wanted to display this with a few different things that I thought were very interesting uh, pertaining to Japan. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this movie, it takes place in the 80s. It's about Nicolas Cage. It's not about Nicolas Cage. If you're not familiar with this movie, uh, Nicolas Cage plays a um, literary something that gets uh, supposedly bitten by a vampire and then he thinks he's becoming a vampire and all kinds of crazy shit happens. Yeah, it's, it's a great movie. It was released in Japan the same year as Michael Keaton Batman, so 1989. I believe this came out in 1988 in the US. But in 1989, it was released in Japan. And in order to get Japanese audiences to go see this movie, because at the time, Nicolas Cage was not a big name, they promoted it like this. So yeah, um, this is an original movie flyer from 1989 uh, for the movie. And you can see here they have they have a lady that resembles the the female vampire from the film, dressed up as Batgirl. It actually even says Bato, little tiny ampersand, and Gar, Batgirl. So when you walk up to this, it just says Batgirl, and it says a bunch of other things here. You flip it over on the other side, and there is the actress from the film, the vampire once again, portrayed inside of the Batman logo but it's got a little tail with a, uh, a little ribbon at the end to make it a little cutesy thing. So they were trying to kind of push this as some kind of connection to Batman, uh, Batgirl. It's just bizarre. Also, I just love the colors on this. So I didn't stop there. I was like, okay, we got the, we got the VHS, we got the original promo theater flyer. Gotta have a movie ticket. A lot of Japanese movies sold tickets with like the poster and image and things on them. So I was like, eh, I'll get one. So I did. Here it is. And it's featuring the color artwork of that same image that you see on the back here. So maybe you could say that I'm a little batshit insane for buying all these things. I still haven't displayed these. These just been just been kind of just sitting around next to my TV. Uh, still don't know how I'm gonna display this yet. So. Uh. <laughs> Man, I really wish it wasn't after midnight. I want to go into a full-on Nicolas Cage impression from this movie, but I can't. I would wake up my wife and kids. Sorry. Next item, Batman related. Let's flow right in, flow right into the next thing. I'm Batman. Yeah, so this is a original 1989, 89, 91? 1992. Batman. From Korea. Uh, maybe I, I... See all that Koreans? But yeah, it's 1992. See? Maybe the 89 Batman movie didn't come out in Korea until 1992? I don't know, let me know in the comments. I didn't, I didn't research jack shit for this video. But that would have been a year or so after Batman Returns. But it just says Batman, it doesn't say Batman Returns. Um, yeah, it's just uh, an inflatable, inflatable Batman with a cape made out of vinyl. I also got this from Retro World Korea. Thanks again, Tony. Awesome shit every time. Check him out if you haven't already. Link in the description since I'm going to be featuring several different items from him. But yeah, this is awesome. <sighs> so yeah, I got this one. I do collect Batman stuff. I actually have a bunch of random obscure Japanese Batman items, which I will be sharing in a separate video, but since he's Korean, I'm stuck him in this video. And he's got a friend. Can you bring your friend over here? Why, sure. He doesn't want to come out. Really? Why? Well, he's kind of shy. He thinks everyone's going to make fun of his face. Well, we won't make fun of his face, will we? Tell him, we won't, we promise, we won't make fun of his face, right? You guys won't make fun of his face. Are you sure about that? It's pretty fucking funny looking. I know, shh, just, just tell him, okay? Okay. I thought you said there weren't gonna be any skits in this video. I lied. 
All right, come on over, bud. Come on over. Just, just give me a second. See, see, they're not laughing at you. I know, I know, you've got your mask on. So guys, uh, say hello. This is, uh, this is Korean Ultraman. Uh, he's also inflatable. Uh, also from Retro World Korea. And um, he's wearing a mask, as Ultraman does. But uh, this is not his actual mask. This is actually a Japanese mask because um, he's ashamed of his actual face. So come on, bud. Let's show the world your face, okay? Come on. For the world. The world must see the truth. Your true beauty. Yeah, see, they're waiting. You can do it. Oh, what's that over there? So yeah, this is this is Korean Ultraman. I mean, he's got some kind of like mustache thing going on here. I mean, what were they thinking? I love it. I love it to death. Also, he's got a belt. I don't think Ultraman ever had a belt. Um, pretty sure this is not officially licensed. So anything goes. It's Korea. All right, Ultraman. See you later. <laughs> I deserve that. Uh, well, I have one more item. Now this is something that's dear to my heart and it's something I've never talked about before, I don't think. It's definitely something I've never shown on my YouTube channel. And it's something that um, I had a hand in, ever so slightly, that uh, never shown on a video. So let's take a look at it. You know, I've got some merch going on right now. I've got the shirts, got the badges and masks. Link in the description. But before all that, before I was even doing YouTube, when I was strictly a blogger, check out my blog if you haven't. I've got a lot of really awesome blog articles and other videos that are copyrighted that I can't put on YouTube that are over there, so also in the description. But yeah, the very first thing that I put out with the Tokyo Toy Bastard logo on it as a product of sorts was a line of bootleg action figures based on the Star Wars action figure line by Kenner. And I collaborated with the now very well-known artist and toy producer, Has No Talent. If you don't follow him, definitely follow him. Um, at the time, he was virtually unknown, and I reached out to him to produce some figures. Uh, I designed some of the colorways and the, the card art and things like that and uh, he pumped him out. We did several different collaborations. Uh, one that's been kind of popular and uh, been, I've been asked about before, so I figured I'd just show it in here. And it is this guy. This is the Tokyo Toy Bastard it Has No Talent collaboration Darth Vader figure. I believe was a decon exclusive. I know that he produced some of these for a decon, designer con, and some of them may have been sold, sold online. This is back in 2016, so this is four years ago, going on five years, so I don't remember all the specifics. My brain's getting too old, I can't remember nothing anymore. So before this, we actually made uh, a few different Boba Fett figures, which I will show you right now. <laughs> Yeah, 
so the Boba Fett figures were fairly popular. We only did a run of five of the first one and then 10 of the subsequent others. And then, yeah, I think uh, this is labeled as 10. We made 10 of these. Most of the figures we made sold out pretty fast. We also did a Microman uh, set of four, a four pack that was a bit pricey, which didn't sell as well. But um, after all of this happened, his his toys have gotten extremely popular and uh, sought after. So I've seen some of these pop up on eBay and I'm quite shocked at some of the prices. So hopefully we can do another run of these and you guys won't have to pay stupid eBay prices if you're trying to get your hands on some of these guys because they are very limited and uh, very precious. But yeah, guys, that's it. That's all the weird random things I wanted to show you after midnight uh, that wouldn't really fit in the other video the way that I have them yeah not really they fit in this video pretty good if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a like also subscribe I got a lot of weird stuff coming out soon that you won't want to miss. So hit that bell as well so that you get notified when I put out a new weird video. See you next time.